deviation we've used, the one for volume, dBA, we started thinking about what would happen if you were turn up or influence or talk about that level of belief as a crucial component towards ownership. And then we came to the conclusion that belief is actually the defining ingredient to ownership. So the level of ownership that you take needs to match your level of belief. So what that means, if you have a very low level of belief in the organizational change you're being proposed, let's say you are working in a team as a business analyst and your manager comes to you and says, listen, we got this new awesome thing. It's called Agile and we're going to work Scrum and you're going to be a product owner tomorrow because we feel that's the best fit for you as a business analyst. You're working with stakeholders, right? So that's perfect for you. So let's do that. And then as you are listening to this person, your brain starts serving up all these belief statements about the last change that you were part of and that didn't work out or the future of, of why you are a business analyst and all of a sudden you're now a product owner. Is that the same thing or something different? Or all these questions influence the way that you perceive and, and take action and, and set your driver for the change. So really the level of ownership is really the match to your level of belief. And if you don't tune that ownership to the level of belief in your organizational change, then you're setting yourself up for failure. So to make that point a bit more clear, we've, we've tried to think about uh, three different types of uh, levels of belief or, or levels of this um, uh, balance between these three points. So we thought of just to make uh, um, things a bit more funny or, or at least a bit more uh, agreeable to you without getting all into a, a big uh, schematic or, or a model. What would that look like if you were to have enormous amount of belief, for instance, but not a big amount of driver or action to go with that? Or maybe the other way around, you would have lots of action. You would really emphasize that in your ownership balance, but not much of the others. So bear with us if we're going to present these three, three types of people to you and, and, and tell us whether this comes across as something natural or true to you. Let's so take the first type person. of behavior, right? Yes. It's, it's, type it's of behavior, what you definitely. see. Yeah. And I apologize in advance if anybody is called Nick or any other of the <laughs> types of people that we're going to use. <laughs> um, that's beside the point. So, um, Let's say you have a, uh, a person in your organization who has a strong level of belief, but not much of the driver or the action. What would that look like? So a person with a strong level of belief would come up to you and say, listen, I went to this conference. It was all about agile. It was called 3.0. I, I know crazy 3.0, but there were some excellent ideas in there. And I think I found the answer to making our organizations work. We have a terrible time to market. We can really up our game here. So I strongly believe in this. And this person knows how to bring that focus towards himself and the belief statement that he's making. But if you look past that, there's very little action, skin in the game we were just talking about. So that person is not involved himself or affected by any of the changes. Um, and there is very little emphasis on the driver. So he would say, let's leave it up to other people. I'm more about the big belief statements and the ideas. And probably in a few months or so, there will be a new big belief coming around the corner about the new idea into change. That would constitute for us this type of person or this type of behavior, we should say indeed. So what would that look like for the second person of the three? So that would mean person has a strong driver, big plans, but not a lot of action or belief to boot. So you can recognize this person as being, as we quoted in the title, very neurotic. So lots of plans, lots of Kanban boards, a lot of post-its, lots of things to do, plan, make schedules, make sure that everybody adheres to, uh, to the work and everybody is being planned in. and um, if you look behind that veil of having a large 
driver, then you would see you would ha see a lot less belief in what that person is actually doing. So they would believe they would believe that if you have an excellent driver, if you just execute everything that's on the board, if you get everything to done on the board, then change would be executed. But in their heart of hearts, they don't actually believe in it, and they fail to take on the action that's also part of that ownership. So finally, we come to that third person. And we have labeled that type of behavior as being the adrenaline junkie. So what that person would have is that last bit of action. Whatever you're saying, maybe also in combination for us that we found out is with a, a Nick the Narcissist kind of type of behavior. You have all, I'm influenced by your plans, by your belief. I really believe in what you're saying. So let's get all into action. Let's, let's just work at it. Let's do this stuff. And let, let's take everything in the box and, and let's get going. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of this. I'm enthusiastic of this. We'll think about the plan later on. We just have to get into action mode and do that stuff. And what that leads is to a, a whole lot of fluff. A lot of uh, uh, things get done all over the place, but not really a plan to boot. And if you look behind it, also not really a belief that those actions will then constitute a real positive change. This is most okay. of the time the person who initiates 14 different projects. There you go. So if, if you now feel like, crap, maybe this is me, it, it could be. The, the answer to the question to, that you can ask yourself is actually, am I believing what I'm doing? Um, but most of the time that, that adrenaline junkie is, is owner of multiple projects. They don't really have a clear view on where they stand with the projects. And as soon as it becomes really fake for them as, uh, fake as, uh, for them as well, they will start the next project. Yes. Yes. Interesting so, behavior. <laughs> yeah. And, and I feel like, uh, we have come across maybe, and of course, uh, maybe I, I overemphasize this, but just to make sure these are these uh, types of behavior we're trying to make so as black and white as possible just to make this point. So you might recognize some of this behavior for yourself or some other people in the organization. And what that for us brings back is tune that level of ownership to the level of belief that you have. So what that means in conclusion 